Hello, everyone, and welcome to Paint Perspective, episode 53. We went to the biggest hobby event in the UK. That's UK Games Expo up in Birmingham. We're going to be talking about that on today's show. I'm joined by James and Joe from Seed Studios. We're also going to be doing our question of the week, our listeners' comments, and of course, some hobby hacks. But first, Joe, your Dark Angels. How are they going? Oh, no, you've stitched me up. <laughs> this is a stitch. That's a stitch. Because you know I haven't done anything. <laughs> that is a joke. That is a joke of an intro. <laughs> um, they aren't going. The the, I mean, they will be, but they aren't so far. Um, we, had a comment, we had a comment earlier that someone said, uh, my least favourite part of the show is the excuses for not having painted anything. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I haven't started painting yet. The list, it, like model wise, is is complete um, as of you giving me that uh, Primaris uh, Lieutenant. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, it's been a bit of inter inter office uh, trading going yeah, on. Yeah, I'll tell you what. The um, I'm set on Dark Angels now, obviously, but there is something niggling in the back of my head that the Angels of Redemption. Color scheme is my favorite color scheme. The half and half. Is that and the it split is a half and half. Wing It is a half thing. and half. I've never painted half and half Marines. And I don't know how viable it would be for me to paint um, an army of them. I think you need to... I, th I, I, I do think, think I need to get it out of my system. I think system you need to... Exactly. You're having, you're having a flashback to my Adeptus Mechanicus itch. I think I, I think might you, do two test models. Normal Dark Angels scheme and also paint Angels of Redemption scheme alongside it and see how I feel about painting. You might yeah. you might just have enough fun painting that that it will scratch the itch and you can just move on exactly. with the Dark Angels Yeah, but thing. also I'm thinking that ultimately the only way, we can give all the tips and everything we want, the only way to actually finish a project is if you're enjoying it. Yeah, yeah. And if that is the colour scheme that I will enjoy the most, do I, I, I need to go for I, the colour scheme? I don't think, well, a pred prediction, not to like... Uh, prophesize this but I think you probably will enjoy painting it less but you will like the look more yeah I think this is I'm an gonna, aesthetic so choice I'm, I'm going to go with George on that one I think you. I think you'll I think I mean like, I could tell you flat out now at the end of it if I had an army of normal dark angels or I had an army of angels of redemption I'll tell you right now angels of redemption is one I would prefer yeah but that's like that's like looking at the, the thing that you want but not realizing what goes into yeah, it. But I'm, ultimately, I'm going to spend more time with the end products than I am with the process. That depends I? how long it takes to paint them. Yeah, I there suppose. is that as well. I, think <laughs> I would gotta, like to think. I think you just got to do it. You got to do one, and then you're I've done. I got to test it. I got yeah. to test it. You got to scratch that itch, mate. Yeah, like, definitely. Is yeah. that um, just going off the top of my head? Is that a full like vertical split scheme? It's full vertical. Because if it was half. just the limbs or like a no, leg, you full. could split them out and do it in sub assemblies. So what and it is? Stuff. It's obviously there's a picture on the screen now. I imagine, mm -hmm. ding. Um, <laughs> uh, it's full vertical split bone and green, so like the the normal green wing there's, color. There's just the no way color. to cheat that. There's no there's no hobby and then hacks on top of that, that. On top of that, there's some red in there because the Aquila's red. Great. You've just got you just got to um, roll the sleeves up and do it. Definitely. Yeah, I need to test it. I think um, you'll probably. I'd say make or break would be the test model, but you got to paint it like fully to completion. Interestingly, as a chapter, I was doing a bit of research as a as a successor. Um, they have similar to most of the Dark Angel successors. They have um, formations similar to Deathwing and Ravenwing. Mm -hmm. They're just not called Deathwing and Ravenwing, as we said before. That's basically like the first and second companies, isn't it? I think. Mm -hmm. um, uh, their version is called the Red Wings. And now they haven't ever specifically been um, described. So whether they are actually red or not is, an, is up to your own decision, I suppose. However, it could be, <laughs> it could be that I end up painting, uh, painting some red Terminators. Make it half and half. Half red. Half, half red, half... No, no. Well, no, 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 well, we no, learned this when bone. I tried it. Yeah. It would be <laughs> work. It would be work. Christmas Marine. <laughs> I, think, I think I would just stick with the, the half and half scheme and then add um, helmets or something that's a different colour or something yeah. like that. But but I thought half, it was interesting anyway. Half part. and half green and red Marines with candy cane bolt guns. So the white, white and red stripes on the camera. I'm so, I'm still so jaded about that because I really, I thought that was such a cool idea doing, when I was torn between doing what the Blood the, Angels and the Dark Angels, yeah. I was like, I'm going to call them Angels of Death, split scheme, it's going to look sick and it looked 
terrible. Yeah. Which wasn't terrible. It just looked like a Christmas It ring. looked terrible. Let's call yeah. it what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't look good. Yeah. Um, idea was there, but yeah. yeah. Okay. James has put you on the chopping block because you've been getting out of uh, of having to talk about your hobby updates for a few weeks. Yeah, I know. No, it's been good. I have. Been... I mean, the last episode was an entire episode on an yeah, army. You... Not his personal been... projects, though. That was a little, little, well, it's little what, side there. There's a, a bit of a crossover. A little bit of a crossover. There was a single model in there that he yeah. painted. Yeah, a procrast procrastination project. Let's call it what it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, in fairness. So, it is June. The Mordians are not done, which I said they would be. Um, so, yeah, I have. What was the forfeit? Can't remember. Uh, it was bragging rights, wasn't it? Oh, it was bragging rights. <laughs> well, yeah. there you go. Congratulations. Yeah. Oh, I just want to take this moment to thank my family <laughs> who always believed in me. Yeah. Um, yeah. The uh, exemplars of the siege have taken over a little bit. I spent the uh, bank holiday weekend uh, making loads of characters for for the army. Uh, I had all this sort of like all these ideas for characters, the names, backgrounds, sort of like the way they look, and all these kind of things, and it kind of just took over. So. So yeah, so I'll uh, I'll get some photos put up there so you can have a look of some of the characters that I've made. I've made the high chaplain, the uh, chief of the librarian. I've made like one of the captains. I've made loads they're of They're all models. like fully painted. Look at that. No, That's amazing. They're mad. They're not, I can't believe you painted not, them so fast, not, James. They're not. Okay, your eyes do not deceive you. They are not painted yet. Um, but uh, I am going to be trying to juggle several projects at once uh, at the moment so yeah there's various things there's obviously the Mordians that I do want to do and I am going to complete them and I am going to get them done I've obviously got to paint models for the uh, the Exemplars of Siege with the, with the uh, colourful spray can our Siege Armour spray can and somewhere amongst that I also have to uh, have to paint some stuff for myself for Golden Demon in October and do some bits for my Blood Angels Primaris army. So I'm fully stacked. Can I can I just say, right, if you'd have if you'd have been a betting man at the start of all of these conversations three months ago, if you'd had the underdog bet on me finishing my Blood Angels before either of you two doing basically anything, yeah. you'd be a rich man right now. Because it was I it mean, was not the, looking the good for me. The long game is still who's gonna have a thousand points first, me or you or James. Well let's be honest, James is not really in the in this conversation. A thousand points of Mordians, a thousand points of Blood Angels, or a thousand points of Dark Angels. Who do we think is going to get there first? Yeah, but I'm, you start? I'm yeah. currently doing the submarine. I've gone, I've gone down, and I'm literally no, because you're spreading yourself thin over multiple projects, so you're not going to have anything finished until they're all finished. Yeah, but that's that's how I've always always been. So so yeah, yeah. Look, this year's been positive, right? Okay, I managed to get everything I needed painted for a competition in time. Okay, so you didn't though. Cancelled one of his entries halfway through. <laughs> Kept that quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't really count, but yeah. Okay. Literally, literally painted a bust to like seventy-five percent completion. Went nah. Oh, did that not enter in there? I didn't want to. No, I didn't want to rush. No, you might, rush you might have thought it did no. enter Joe because he didn't talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I, I kept that, that one. That I kept that in. one on the submarine. I didn't want to. No, I got to a point where I was like, I've got two days left. I don't want to rush it. I'd rather take more time. Learn. I was because also I respect it's, the choice. It's also a bit of a learning learning experience for me. Like I haven't painted a bust before, and I'm doing a perfect kind of like transition from painting forty k models and doing something that's. Bigger in scale, as in the bust, a 75 mil bust, um, or like an academic bust. Um, and I'm in kind of overlapping sort of like my, the style of painting I do on 28 mil models onto the onto the onto the bust. So it's still edge highlighted, but it's got loads more glazing involved and that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna get it done because it's a great learning experience and painting something totally different, but it is another one of those little fringe kind of like cases that I just need to put a bit of time into it when I get a chance opportunity. I respect the choices, I respect the project, I respect your decision not to finish it and rush and enjoy yourself. But you're never going to finish that. It's not fin getting finished. I will finish it. I will finish it. I, I am going to get the bus finished and I'm going to get the Mordians and I'm going to get the Mordians done. So, so yeah, I'm committed to doing this it. This year? Yes, this year. They will be done. By June. By June. We've said. We've still got 30 days. So it's fine. 27 days. No, so but it's, technically by June would be by the start of June. Yeah. yeah okay. It's, well, you're telling me that by the end of the month, you can have all of your Mordians done. Oh, that's no way happening. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I don't know what we're having this conversation, no really, to be honest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, also this week, yes. you wanna, well, before we get to the, the main thing, which is uh, UK Games Expo, busy weekend for you two. Yeah. Because also this weekend, uh, you attended War Boots. Yes. It was the, uh, it was crazy actually thinking about it because I was looking back and we've done uh, six or seven War Boots now, like, and we do four a year. So it's, it's quite crazy that we're kind of like way into year two of War Boot. Um, Do you want to just explain what War Boot is for those who may not be... Uh... Away. Yeah, so Warboot is a wargaming uh, boot sale that I set up uh, with uh, my friend Sam, who runs uh, a shop uh, at Barley Lands in Billericay. Um, we basically wanted to 
doing uh, an event in Essex that's like a wargaming boot sale where we get loads of traders down. Everyone's got lots of grey shame uh, to, to kind of like uh, sell on. You've quite rightly pointed out on many occasions, I, I, you know, I did it so that I could get hold of stuff and bring it, bring it to me rather than me go hunting yeah, Joe, for it. Joe it, calls it less of a boot sale, more of a ruse to bring all of yeah, the second-hand models in the is. UK to your doorstep. It's 100% yeah. what it is. I don't understand how that could even be a question. <laughs> you, you can either go to the source or bring the source to you. And I, I a, couple of, to... a couple of war boots ago, I don't know, did we do this where we said about um, where Paul messaged me a picture? I don't remember. Okay, to be I'll, we'll put the picture up. A couple of war boots ago on the Friday, James said, um, "You know, I'm not going to buy anything this weekend." And then uh, I think war boot starts at, at what 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Yeah, starts at 10 a.m. at 9:30 a.m. Paul <laughs> Paul sent me this picture. Okay, now. Um, I'll let you draw your own conclusions as to what's going on there. I was um, I was purely <laughs> having a look. That's all I was doing. I was having a look. Having a look. Right. <laughs> if, if you're listening on audio or even watching on YouTube, you won't see the pile of stuff that's on the table <laughs> yeah. uh, currently. Well, this was from this week. Yeah. This was from this week. Yeah. One of the beauties of... Walking. Same thing happened this week, effectively. Yeah, it did. Um, yeah. I, again, I I turned up a little bit early, just, just walked in. I do my thing of... Um, I don't actually help run Warboot or anything, but I turn up about 10 minutes early, see if anyone wants a tea. They all say no. And then I just sort of get to have, get to be around and check everything early, but don't actually have to do anything. Um, <laughs> it's, a fair, it's a fair choice. Um, so I did, did just that this week. And as I walked in, Paul um, sort of grabbed my attention instantly and said, Joe, you've got to stop him. <laughs> and I looked up, I looked up and James was... Was uh, diving into a, to a, well, he'd already actually acquired a lot of these books, I think. It must be for disappointing him. for people that travel far to Warboot, get in at 10 when it opens, well, only it, to find that all thing. of the stores have been ransacked by James. No, they, they, don't, the they don't know it was there in the first place. It's, already it's gone. just a bunch of empty stores. They're just the walking thing, around yeah. an open hall. Here's the thing. What I will say is that even with this happening every time, there's still some crazy stuff there, isn't oh, there? Oh, honestly, like the, the 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 caliber of stuff that is there, as in like rare or old or uh, like even just well painted miniatures or variation. We had a, a, a magic um, trader at one event. We had a load of like, rare magic cards. Mm. Like the caliber of like stuff that you can get there and really reasonable pricing is 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 one of the virtues of Warboot. Being frank, like you know, um, it is the reason why. Um, why I set it up to give people the opportunity to to get bargains and to 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 get the stuff that they've always wanted for, for better prices, you know. And I've got to say, like this 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 year's June uh, war boot was absolutely mental. There was a point where I think I had both my hands on my head, going like, "What is going on?" Because it was so busy. The, I think it's outgrown the room. Yeah, I th I, I, it's outgrown the room definitely. Because uh, yeah. like, that was a sweat box. <laughs> I yeah. think is the technical term. That was <laughs> roasting in there. Wasn't yeah. it? And it wasn't even that hot out. Like, it was just so many people in one room. We had we had over 300 people turn up, uh, which... Not at once. At, not at once. Throughout well, the, the doors opened and the room was basically full. And I looked to my right and people were still coming in. I, I, we'll get up some photos so you can have a look at obviously how busy it was. But I, I was blown away. And I've got to say, like anyone who's watching this that does come to Warboot or is from Essex or has traveled to Warboot from outside of Essex, like a huge thank you for coming. It's It's... We're starting to get a bit of a community there, which is like you get the regular faces the same that you see. You know, time, and yeah. like, there's a guy that travels up from Brighton. There's a guy that I know travels from from sort of like the um, uh, from Middlesex. There's a guy that I know that travels from near Nottingham. Like it, it is crazy. Um, so much so that we've been asked to to maybe host some other locations, which is a whole nother thing. But um, when when is the next one? If people want to, so it's going to be in September. The date's still to be confirmed, just because okay. of. If you few calendar clashes I'll, but, uh, I'll link the socials um in the description of this yeah. so if you're listening check the description uh, of this on youtube or on your podcast app there'll be a link to instagram and then if you follow them on there you'll see yeah, yeah. Uh, you'll see when the next one's announced there, there there was some absolutely bonkers things for sale like and and i i didn't get the holy grail of this 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 war boot like there was something there that got picked up by somebody which genuinely i i've never seen in the wild ever before uh, it's not a Pokemon or anything. Don't worry. Um, what was like, that? So it's a John Blanche. I've got. We'll put a photo up. But it's a, it's a couple of John Blanche books. One of them's um, it's the Inquisitor art book. So it's the book that has all the art for uh, the game Inquisitor, the seventy five mil uh, Inquisitor game. Fifty four. Uh, sorry, fifty four mil um, uh, game. 
And there was another one that which is literally just a Warhammer 40,000 John Blanche book. And in there, you've got some phenomenal bits of art, like in that book. And I've ne- and I've never seen one uh, uh, literally on either on eBay or um, or uh, any other trade event or anything like that. It was another chap got it, um, and, and and quite rightly so. He literally saw it, knew what it was, and picked it up straight away. And I, I didn't want to interject or anything, but like he literally just she gets tackled. Yeah, yeah. there you go. <laughs> yeah. So that's the point. He can't buy it all. So yeah. there's still some good stuff there. He can have a look as early as he wants. There's still some it good was, stuff in it there. Was, uh, He's only one man. Exactly. So to be yeah. fair, to be fair, the, the, I'm really happy with what I managed to grab. And grab let's get, let's go through some of the cool. stuff that you did get. So, so we're doing, like, we're doing like a little hole. Just a little so, hole, yeah. Just to, just to show, just to show, cause I, the reason I wanted to show this is just purely so people can see that the, the caliber of stuff that you can get at like a, a, a war boot. Like well, I'd say, to be fair, normally, I was actually quite surprised with your haul this time because normally you come back with loads of miniatures. Yeah, yeah. Mostly it's, <laughs> I thought you were going to say, normally you come back with a load of tat. <laughs> <laughs> no. Normally it comes back with loads of old metal know, second yeah, ed stuff, yeah, but this yeah. time bit this, of a curveball. Yeah. So I have got my original copy of 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 this book, which is obviously my favorite book ever, which is Angels of Death. Um but the one of the sellers there had a like sealed massive uh box of old codexes, like second ed codexes. And it this is it's got a, a tiny couple of little bits on the spine, which is quite normal for like something of this age from 1992, I think it is. Uh, uh, yes, 92, I think it is. I think so. Um, Significantly older than me yeah. in that book. Um, <laughs> it's as old as me. But, <laughs> yeah. But um, this one is in absolutely immaculate condition other than like, a couple of marks on the spine. And it just shows you like, the, the, you know, this has been sat in someone's loft or something for, for decades, literally. Um, and I always, I read the living hell out of my one and obviously being younger, didn't really look after it. And I, I just wanted something that is in better condition. So this is like, it was a really easy kind of like choice to just grab this. And it, again, it wasn't a lot for what it was. It's, it's, it's only cost me like, I think 20 odd quid. So it's not bad for like a codex of that age. It's like the price of a new one. Isn't it? Yeah. But well, it's, yeah, it's a bit, bit mad. So that was like one of my first crazy things that I got. Um, I always wanted this and I've, I, I actually, my one got, got thrown away, I think. So a cup of tea got spilt on it, but, um, <laughs> but, um, but this, this is, a uh, an assassin's, uh, supplement codex that actually came with white dwarf. So when the assassins very first came out, um, this was, uh, this was the, uh, the, the supplementary codex that came out in white dwarf and it has got some absolutely fantastic, um, artwork in it, like, which is just absolutely amazing. Um, I really, really use a lot of artwork um, for like when I'm painting and when I want to like take inspiration for miniature painting, like um, it's just something that I always point to. So having stuff like this is always what I look for. Um, so yeah, that was, that was great. Um, then I got my Holy Grail with event, which for me was something that I wanted for a very long time. Never found one, never saw one on eBay come up um, or they were either in another country, super expensive or things like that. And it is Inquis Exterminatus, which is, Probably one of the best art books I think that Games Workshop have ever produced, in my opinion. It's um, it's got everything from John Blanche, Dave Gallagher. It's got uh, like everything you could think of, like artwork wise. Um, in in and this is actually the uh, probably I said like the, the the book that I've always always wanted that just has all that different artwork and it. it's all black and white. There's a couple, there's a few little color pieces in here. How old is that? I didn't even know books like this existed. I, I've literally I I'd never even heard of it. However. There are some books like this that have come out like sort of within my time and I still never heard of them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. This is year 2000. So it's a 2000 book. But again, loads of amazing, like amazing old school second edition kind of John Blanche, John Blanche style artworks and things like that. Like just just something totally different that... um, just to have a, a collection of like books and artwork and stuff like that. Again, this is purely for reference for when, for when, um, for when I want to paint or if I like this, I, I've, I've got a, a niggle to, to do some inquisition at some point in the future. Add that to the list. Um, you can add, yeah, <laughs> add, add that one to this, but, but, but it is, as I said, like as a reference book, like I'll just show you what this is. Amazing yeah, hold that one up. That's yeah, great. this one's sick. Um, so like as a reference image for like, imagine having him as like a, as a, like an, an acolyte or something in your inquisitorial war band or something, just, just something totally different. And, and again, you've got a whole mix of different artists in here, obviously mentioning John Blanche, Dave Gallagher and a whole, whole load of other, um, uh, sort of illustrators and draw and painters, et cetera, that are in there. So that was for me the best, the best thing that I picked up the weekend. Um, Armageddon is undoubtedly my favorite campaign or planet. Uh, narrative wise it's where it's obviously still legion art where Tycho and the third company fought during the uh, during the uh, third war of armageddon uh something that i really wanted to grab was um 
the Battle for Armageddon. So it's the book that explains all about Armageddon, the whole campaign, uh, third, uh, third War for Armageddon. It's turned into a book club now, um, isn't it? I know, yeah. Do you yeah. know what? I, I, I was thinking as well. So like we've spoken a lot about how me and George maybe aren't super nostalgic for certain things in the way that you are, especially older things and stuff like that, older models and stuff. But however, I do love looking through the older books and yeah. the older white dwarves and stuff. It is like, even if it's not like, oh, I remember that. Yeah. It yeah. is just cool, isn't it? It's yeah. So yeah. Good. I feel like I missed out a little bit on that. Like when, especially when I look through like some of the stuff that James got, like all the white dwarfs that you see on the background. They're all from my such. childhood. Like literally yeah. all but of I them. I feel right? like I sort of like, I know they still do it now, but I feel like it's kind of had it. It's not quite the same. It's not the same really, is it? Yeah. I kind of feel like I missed out a little bit on that. All used that. To, that used to be. That era. As a kid, like getting white dwarf every month, that was like, because obviously that there wasn't internet, social media, all this kind of stuff. That was my, my fix of, of, Warhammer yeah. every single I, month. I think not obviously specifically Warhammer for me, but I do think that my age group was the the pinnacle age group of experience in both things. Yeah. Because until I was about twelve or ten or twelve, I probably experienced a lot of the same things that James might remember growing up. So like certain things to do with I don't know, like even just non internet based things basically. Mm. But then 12 onwards which is still relatively young it's probably more similar to what george would have experienced which is like experiencing the internet for the first time and 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 accessibility of all that kind of stuff so having it's a bit weird for me because it's like i did have stuff like this i wasn't particularly into warhammer at that time though i kind of found warhammer a little bit after i guess so yeah i used to used to get like I was like a comic kid, so I used to get like yeah. Marvel stuff and Simpsons comics and stuff like that. I mean, I had a little a little spell with Warhammer and like Airfix kits and stuff when I was quite young, maybe say like eight years old, but I wasn't into it enough where I was getting like books and stuff. Yeah, I remember yeah, my uncle gave thing. me some um, it's like World War II like sort of uh, book where it had like about tank, like mod model stuff. It was more like mm -hmm. Tamiya kits and sort of stuff and it was showing you about like weathering and stuff, but I don't remember ever having like White Dwarf or anything. And then yeah. it wasn't until... I didn't get into the hobby properly until like 2018. So obviously by then it's full force yeah. YouTube. Because I yeah. guess how old are you? How old are James when you're getting um, the internet or experiencing Warhammer on the internet for uh, the first time? Probably 15, 16. Yeah. So you're like, like you've already yeah. had a lot of those yeah. experiences with collecting the magazines and stuff. I've all, always have. Like, I we spoke yeah. about this before. When was it like YouTube? Uh, YouTube took off with Warhammer stuff. That was that was way like, later, even later. like like YouTube launched in two thousand and five, and then it, Mini Wargamer were around from about two thousand and six or something. We spoke about that a little bit with Dave. Yeah, didn't we, yeah. When he was on? But it was like getting into like twenty ten ish before until it was, like it was properly actually going, kicking it? off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah um, like it, it, I, I, the books and like White Dwarf specifically, and like even when like all the sort of like chapter approved books came out talking about like the different space like that that was my absolute like love as a kid. And I, uh, back then, I never I wasn't able to get half of these books at all whatsoever like so being able now to get them and also getting them at Warbit where the prices are really good um and you can always sort of haggle deals and like for like things like that it's a really good environment to be able to get stuff like that so probably not a bad starting ground for us to be fair book wise yeah i mean i i do have a few older like um you know codexes and and um some of the old guides and things like that that i do find myself if i see them around anywhere like a charity shop or something i do just pick them up I, yeah. I, I love i love a good book like you know i, I even just fr from a design point of view i just like looking at the old stuff yeah yeah, like, yeah. Uh, it's yeah. just so so i mean good. like i, I know the, the, look at the the cover behind george like the the, the white orc what like with that's when gork and morka came out like that that is it's just so it's, good it's such a crazy cover art you know and then and yeah, I mean, uh, and there's a couple of other little bits and bobs, nothing too crazy, but like, um, I, I, the are these, are these all part of the same set? So they are. The so what happened? There was a there was a Horus Heresy collected visions book that had like an amalgamation of these four books, and I never got the opportunity to get these books. So I I was really fortunate that the seller that I got all the books that I've shown so far was from one seller. Um, I managed to get um all of the Horus Heresy uh like the collected visions book. I say collected visions. It's the volumes uh visions of war and visions of books. So. Right from volume one, um, and then obviously the best one because it's got the the best prime mark on it. Obviously, uh, volume two with Sanguinius <laughs> on it, um, and then uh, we just going to say zero points for the audio listeners to guess who was on the front of that. One. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry about that, audio listeners. And then the third one, which is Visions of Darkness, which has got Horus on the front of it. So there's that, uh, and then a slightly angrier Horus on uh, number four, which is obviously Visions of Death. It's the uh, the dark book. 
Um, and each of them has corresponding uh, corresponding artwork in it to that specific. Are these uh, art books or are they? Story yes, books? so they are. So they're literally art books, and it's it's oh, sick. it's amazing. Like they literally have. Oh, that's mega! I love that. They literally have so many pages and pages and pages of of all different manner of arts. You've got John Blanche's in here. Let's, Reading that on my next it's long, it's, long break. <laughs> there's, there's some custod custodians. You've got the John Blanche here, and obviously the other. Like it is a phenomenal set of books and you've, whether you get these four and you can get these four or you get the collected visions which is like an amalgamation one it's still a really good book um as a coffee table and i know we spoke about coffee table books before but as a coffee table book just for when you know people come around or they want to look at the artwork and stuff those four or the collected visions are amazing so to get all four of them in one fell swoop was just really fortunate and again thank you very much to the seller for letting me pick them up in one go um last thing something that i've always uh, I, i've seen loads and i never had the opportunity to get it um which is quite a cool book is insignum astartes which is adam in the office will love this one it's um it's uh, an ultramarine book or it's a, a book all about how a space marine chapter is formulated. <laughs> the uh, tagline is the uniforms and regalia of the space marine. Yeah. Yes. It's, a, it's very handy to tie into our uh, last week's episode. Yeah, really. I wish I'd got it in a. But if I'd call it a uniform, yeah. so it probably well, dated it, itself a little bit. <laughs> well, it, it goes into everything. Like You've got stuff like, obviously, how the markings go on tanks and land raiders. And all oh, that we're getting stuff. nitty gritty yeah, with it's the transfer really, really, placement. And then you've got some amazing David Gallagher artwork here. Um, just absolutely incredible artwork. Uh, so this is the old box arts that I used to absolutely love when I was a child. Um, everything. I tell you what, I do remember having that that uh, that bike and that land speeder when I was a kid. Mm. Yeah. yeah, they're they're just it's just a really good book. That it looks like about, a, a souped up version of the How to Paint Space Marines. Yeah, it's book. very similar to that. Yeah. yeah, and it's got it's got loads of things like, for example, like badge variants, like chap like in, it's like a different sort of like markings and things like that. It's just a really good book to just if you want to really get into the nitty gritty and the reason they use regalia because it really does go into that much detail about sort of individual chapters, heraldry, how chapters organise, like the different companies, markings, uh, what each each company's each company specific chapter banner, the information about the chapter banner. Again, the, the reason why, just in a nutshell, just to kind did, of tie did, sorry off, to interrupt, did they do different chapters for that? Or no, it was just it was just the Ultramarines right. one in that one. There but, are some other chapters. Yeah, there are. Yeah, yeah, but it's focused on the Ultramarines. Yeah. To, to kind of like tie all that in, the reason why I jumped at the chance of getting these, a couple of personal ones like the uh, Angels of Death Codex, et cetera. But other than that, it's purely so that whenever I want to look at something and get reference or I want to get an idea for something or a kind of stuff, it's yeah. a really good point of, to go in. We always talk about real life reference and these these books are the closest real life reference to to using Google Images. You know, having something in hand is quite good to do it. So yeah, so all in all- It's also more- artwork like you don't get so much like actual illustration when you google image such stuff especially some of the older stuff that's like not as popular or not been scanned half digitally. the time does that make sense yeah yeah, yeah half yeah. the time you get other people's models yeah come up yeah yeah i i just i i always say this that i think that the, the law narrative and that side of it is a third of painting like i do think it's a it's 40k is very much like science fiction historical modeling and having that kind of point of reference you can obviously do whatever the hell you like that's perfectly fine but if you are really into it and want to add that overlay of richness from it, these having a book or something is the best way to do it, in my opinion. So all in all, an amazing haul. Um, had a great, great time at Warboot. And um, and if you do uh, or are interested in coming, then the next one will be in September. The date will be confirmed very soon and it will be up on the socials. Yeah, maybe yeah. we could do a little meet up um, there or something. Yeah, we mean to go to one of these. Like every single time you do one, I've been busy on the Sunday. Yeah, the, um, we, we had a couple of people come over and talk about the podcast and stuff. Yeah, we did. As well, yeah. Which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, that all in all, great haul. You know that here at CH Studios, we're all about delivering the highest quality in everything that we do. And that doesn't stop at painting miniatures, which is why when we decided to finally create our own merch, we went all out. We've created completely unique graphics full of awesome miniature painting, nods, and references in two sleek monochrome designs that will look great as part of your everyday wear and not just something for the gaming table. Look, we know that nothing is worse than supporting a creator by buying a shirt only to find you never want to put it on because of the quality. When designing these, we used the same attention to detail as we do on our miniatures to make merch that we would actually want to wear every day. All of our apparel is made from high quality, premium cotton blends, which fit well, are lightweight, breathable and comfortable to wear all day, no matter the weather. But best of all, as a listener of the podcast, you can get 10% off your merch order and a free sticker pack by using the code POD10 at checkout. To get yours now and support the show, head to the link in this episode's description or go to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop. Okay, after a little 
Paint Perspective Book Club. Cheers, James. Sorry. <laughs> should, we do, should we do the listeners' comments? Yep. Steve Davis, 3772, says, I've decided to help Joe out by painting some dark angels in solidarity. Although it's probably his fault they're called the Unforgiven. It's a bit of a... <laughs> you know the, the gift the, uh, they had me in the first half? Or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have, um, thanks, though, I think. Thanks for the so solidarity. We've had a couple of people in solidarity get quite excited about you doing Dark Angels. I know, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Maybe together. Again, we're going back to the communism army thing. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe the, the real Dark Angels army is built by all of us equally in spirit. <laughs> not sure about that. No, okay, I'm not going to get out of it. Oh, I'm not going to get out of it. I will paint something. Uh, Sinister Plank 3113 says, those blood angels would look epic with a black base rim. Now that's in reference to my blood angels that I painted. And mm -hmm. I brought this up specifically because not only was this the top rated comment, it was also the most popular comment because he was not <laughs> the only person that said this. I've had multiple comments on the YouTube video. I've had DMs from people. It's correct. Let it go. It's Let correct it go. is the problem for you. Yeah. It is correct. Yeah. Um, and it matches the colour scheme, red and black. So, yeah. Yeah, but that's why I don't want... Right, okay. We're not rehashing this. That's why <laughs> I don't want the black face rim. They've got the black... I'm doing black shoulder trim. OG. There's too much black in the model. Let it go. Do you know what? I haven't even thought about face rim colour for the Dark Angels. Well, I mean, Still Legion Drab is the correct answer. You saw the one that I done? Yeah, what, about, what about the grey base on the Exemplar of Siege? No, grey's, don't be, don't be coming in with grey base. Don't be coming in all like, oh, I'm sitting in the middle because I'm in the grey base. No. <laughs> no not uh, well, I haven't decided their base. Pick a side, one or the other. I you can't be doing this little middle ground. I haven't decided the base in theme yet, I suppose. So mm. it depends on that, doesn't it? As we all Well, know. if I'm going to be correct to my actual take, do something that matches the basing. So <laughs> okay. if you do grey bases, grey's fine. But okay. yeah. All right. Okay. All right. We'll see. Uh, Happy Dude says... For a laugh, I just took a look at the hardware store for names of house paints. Having 50 types of off-white is an achievement by Dulux. When will we mini painters get flaked almond or dreamy truffle? <laughs> That's on the uh, the Vallejo uh, paint review episode that we've done. Yeah, I mean, I don't think they're far off. No, the they're, they're, not, they're not too far. Like they're, they're rebranding some of the stuff now, you were telling me, actually. The, the, the Vallejo. Yeah. yeah, the, the Vallejo thing... Um, I don't know if any of the new range includes Flake Dormand or whatever it is. On there. Um, <laughs> Soft I Struffle. I don't know if they've renamed any paints, but they are completely rebranding. Like they've changed the, the logo and stuff, aren't they? Yeah, they've changed yeah. the logo. They've changed um, the design of the, um, of the bottles. I've noticed that they've moved Branding. the serial number to the bottom of the label, In which the middle. means that if you have even a Vallejo paint rack, you can no longer see the name of the paint without pulling it out. The one thing we don't know is if it is also along the top somewhere around the side That's or on true. the back or something like that. We've only seen That's front on because we don't have the paints in hand. That's true. We did also, and I wish this was on camera. Um, oh, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> we pranked James a little bit in mid-conversation um, to, <laughs> talking, about, <laughs> talking about the Vallejo rebrand. Me and George just casually started talking about how Everyone was talking about them discontinuing, uh, oh no, changing the formula of 950 yeah, black so that it's more satin in finish now. And we it, said that, um, because we spoke about it on the episode, we was like, oh, you know how it's just called 950 black and not matte black? And James loves how matte it is. Yeah. We was like, oh, they've decided that that's stupid because it's not called matte black, so they're making it more satin. Yeah. And his face just dropped. I was like, <laughs> and then we, I, we, I literally was like, I need to find the nearest hobby shop and buy up the whole rack now. <laughs> like, we, like, we like tagged on as well that like they are bringing out a matte black, but people are saying it's a bit satiny. <laughs> Doesn't cover very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I nearly had a heart attack. All right. Okay. So like, well, they are changing the label. So if you're particularly fond of the old label, you might. Need to I was going to say, I don't scrutinize the labels clearly as much as George. Cause I didn't even realize, I don't even know where the serial number at the, uh, at the top. I know, I know the serial number is, but I, I, I've got a few of those new Vallejo parts. Uh, and I've not. Even, out yet. Yeah. That, well, the, the, the new color, the, the new, new color, label. or the game, the, the rebrand of the game color is, I would imagine the label would be very similar to the model color um, rebrand. They're all the same. Yeah. So I've got a couple I didn't of know the, if any of them were out yet. Thank God, because that will really make it less confusing. Yeah. Yeah. To differentiate between the, the two ranges when they all look the same. It's I've great. got a few of the game color and I haven't, I can't confirm or deny whether the serial number has moved, but I, they, they do, they do look, they do stand out a bit better than the old, old labels. So yeah. 
Yeah. Except when they don't, when they're in your paint rack and you can't tell what paint it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Silatham says, how about stickers of everyone at Siege with a Panini style album to collect them in? This is a wild uh, thing. We almost have, we have like, I reckon we have enough, like including all the freelance artists and everything, we probably have enough to do this. That's true. For like a, an okay sized album. That's true. Um, if it was the office, maybe not so. If it was just the office, you'd be it'd be a one page one thing page, yeah. probably. But um, I mean, it could be done. We are you can if you're interested. In is this, this is this because we said about having you have stickers of Paul? We, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've like caricatures of each yeah, other. Yeah, right. That was it. Like yeah. That. We do kind of have caricatures of the team um, on the t-shirt that George is wearing, yeah. which is the what? Siege team T. Yeah. Um, so you got some of the painters in there. Um, kind of reimagined as uh as different individuals in that battle line. Although what I will say is if you are interested in this, your first taste of something similar could be on the uh on the Colour Forge uh signature series Kickstarter, which we're a part of obviously. Mm-hmm. Um if you head over there, have a look at some of the daily unlocks that have already come out. And you'll see some trading cards in there. You might be able to put one and one together and work out <laughs> uh, a particular trading card that might be coming up, um, which is quite cool. I cannot confirm or deny. Uh, also, the the um, Colour Forge thing, just on, on a complete tangent, the Colour Forge thing is fully funded now. Yeah. So yeah. thanks. Um, Amazing. Thank it's you. It's only been in like a few days as well. Yeah, yeah. So Not thanks to anyone who... Uh, we had, uh, we'll get into UKGE, I suppose, and talk about that a bit more. But... Um, We've had people come up to us and say they're looking forward to the color and everything. So thank yeah. you if you've uh, if backed you've the campaign. backed the campaign so far, yeah. And even if you haven't, there's still time to do so. If you check the link in the description of this episode, you can find a link to the Kickstarter campaign. There still should be some time to get your copy of Siege Armor uh, as well. Uh, we've had a review once again. Nice. Apple Podcasts, five star, obviously, because why would you write this podcast? Anything else, mm-hmm. let's be honest. Uh, this is from 2C40K who says, great entertaining chat, hot tips, and hotter takes. <laughs> uh, really great podcast and painting discussion. While my painting approach and skill level leans towards army painting, the high level discussions are really interesting and useful when I do feel like pushing myself. The best bit, however, is the level of friend- <laughs> The best thing, however, is the level of friendly, petty bickering that speaks to me in a way that other podcasts don't. <laughs> Glad we can deliver. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why I included this. It was, uh, that, that tickled me, that, the, uh, the petty bickering. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about, to be honest. I think we're all, uh, we're all so know. level-headed normally. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, as you might have guessed from the title of this episode, we attended UK Games Expo this past weekend. Mm-hmm. And uh, we thought we'd have a little chat about it. It Was uh, was it your first time going, Joe? It was my it was, first time it was going. my first time going as well, yeah. James, you've been a couple of times? I was the shepherd. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, well, you say he was the shepherd. <laughs> yeah. He was like, he was like James, like, I'll organise it. I'll drive us all down there. We get halfway. He's like, haven't booked parking. I don't know where we're going. <laughs> okay. Bear in mind, the last time I went... <laughs> nearly ended up at a Bear Grylls show at one <laughs> yeah. point. I mean, that sounded pretty good, to be fair. I mean, uh, last time I went... Uh, as a, we obviously had a stand there, so we had a stand there two years ago, um, and parking was included, so I didn't need to to, to get parking. So that's why that happened. But yeah, bit of a, um, bit of a flex. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they actually pay for parking when you uh, yeah, when you're a big deal like me, you don't have to worry about little things like parking. <laughs> When you have a stand, it comes with parking. That's part of the virtue of it. I mean, drive by unloading doesn't sound very fun to me, but yeah. um, but but um, but yeah. So so got up there. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Drive by. Well, I presume it means you just drive by the Won't door you, and, and you, you just truck truck stuff yeah, drive oh, by unloading. Okay. Unloading. Okay, yeah. got you, got you. Yeah. I think exactly. he said unloaded. I was like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> drive by unloading. No, yeah. drive sounds by like, by like a P- terrible video game. Sounds like a PS One game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Sequel, the sequel to Drive By. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, well, look. So we went up there, got up there super early, um, which was good. Um, a couple of the office, like the team up there, and painting team up there as well. So it was good to see them up there. But yeah, I've been um, previously uh, on two occasions, and also as I mentioned, Siege have had a stand there in the past. Um, so yeah, so I'm very familiar with UK Games Expo. Really great convention. Um, Obviously, it's got way more board gaming and more, uh, it's got way more board gaming in its earlier iterations. And then gradually over the last couple of years or so, uh, it's got more and more war gaming. So it's a really diverse mix of games and people that are there. Yeah. It kind of covers the whole gamut, really, doesn't it's it? It's great, yeah. In a good way, I think, actually, because I think if you're the sort of person that's like, 
into your little niche of board gaming or tabletop gaming like we are it kind of you're going for that but then you inadvertently end up seeing all this other cool stuff that you probably wouldn't have been drawn to because if you just go to like your hobby shop or your board game shop that has all the stuff that you like you're not exposed to as much of it if that makes mm, sense yeah. but i saw some loads of really cool board games that i wouldn't have really bothered to look at otherwise yeah it gives, um, it's a really good opportunity to go around and like you're there's always something something to look at there's so many traders there so many different companies independence large scale and international like it's a whole blend of like every aspect of like the wargaming and board gaming industry all in one place over a week over three days so it's just yeah it is, it is absolutely fantastic it's cool as well like a lot of the companies that there as traders have obviously like a fairly senior person from the company there so mm -hmm. you get to talk to directly to like yeah. people who are making decisions at some of these companies and anyone that we had a chat to whether they knew who we were or didn't or whatever like everyone was just quite open for a bit of a chat really wasn't it? it's quite cool to actually we, we talk a lot about um just it's nice to like to even more boot or whatever it's nice to just be surrounded by people who are into the same things as you so you can have those conversations because we don't all get to have those conversations yeah. all the time yeah um and it's a nice mix as well of like not only like big companies but s like smaller companies yeah um even like independent like very tiny like one one man show companies mm. um all the way up to like you know element and all that yeah so. yeah um even yeah anything from that to walking past ian livingston randomly at one point <laughs> yeah that was mega um yeah. so that that is another side of it as well that's that's cool is the the amount of um the amount of people that are there that you can bump into that um i don't know the amount of known people i mean, I mean I'm, I'm fairly sure i can comfortably call ian livingston a celebrity but like I, my, like famous people within our space anyway that you can bump into that you might not all see in in person a lot or something like that yeah saying that there were some people that we knew there that we didn't actually i didn't get to see dave once no i didn't i mean he was charging me under the big suit of chaos power armor so you would have thought i mean this 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 if anything says the scale and the size of this convention right mm. because we was looking for mini wargaming dave in a giant space marine uh cosplay yeah and we couldn't find couldn't him, find him. <laughs> Can find him anywhere. Yeah, yeah. He was, uh, he was, he was off slaying something somewhere. So yeah, <laughs> I like the idea that he was clearly just running about in it because every time <laughs> someone told us he was somewhere, he wasn't there by the time we got there. Yeah, so he was just sort of darting around. Yeah, that no, was good. Um, yeah, we got to see like uh, Arbit Arian. Yeah, recently on the there. show. Yeah, it was, was cool. Caught up after the episode again. It was just yeah, really good to just you know just chat to him again about the same sort of things, sort of painting and stuff, and how 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 he kind of found the episode and stuff. It was really good. Yeah. Um, We've never really done like a, an aftermath with a guest, have we? No, normally we just don't ever see them again. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, um, in the case of Luton. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, having said that, yeah, like so. Um, obviously, we we were doing the Colourforge thing that I mentioned earlier, and yeah. Colourforge had a stand there, and the um, the Kickstarter launched on the Friday of UK Games Expo. We were there on the Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, but even then, we didn't get to see, like, everyone was so dark, like, everyone was, like, oh, only here for the Friday, or I think Pete, the Wargamer, was maybe there for the Friday and the Sunday, and we were there on the Saturday or something like that. So it was like, we got to see Mikey, didn't we, for Yeah, a we bit, saw but... we saw Mikey. Um, yeah, saw, yeah, obviously caught up with all the guys from Colourforge as well, which was really good. Um, what just... was your, obviously, we've had, like, some tests and stuff of, of Alcan. Yeah. But. We, that was us seeing other people's cans for the first time. I was. What was your impressions? I really good. I thought it was a really nice selection of different colours. Like, um, I, I really, really liked uh, Mikey's red. Definitely, I do like that a lot. I'm surprised. I'm surprised James has gone Shocked. for red. Yeah, yeah. No. Of all the colours, yeah. I wouldn't have thought James would be drawn to yeah, that. Yeah, there's a blue. There's a grey. There's a pink. And James, James chose red. I didn't see that coming at all. No. I actually really like uh, Pete's can, Dead Animal Bits. Mm -hmm. I think that. Not only is the name amazing, so that's great for a start, um, but the use of it as a desaturated color that you can then apply white or other colors onto, or even just use it for contrast paint as well, is is I think a really well placed uh, well placed can as well. I think it's it's quite good. The thing I like about Pete's is that it is that sort of more 
desaturated tone that has even he says it's got like a bit of a reddish pink yeah he kind said of, in his video it's got a tiny bit of red in it yeah which is actually similar to ours yeah like the, the the metallic has a tiny tiniest bit of red in it yeah just to give like a, a kind of like an essence of that color in there i think which is quite nice oh yeah and there's also people have already started to pick up a few different combinations of the cans things that might work well together and our one going with the midwinter blue as like a um if you could like Zenith for them or something. Or, or like Verdigris or something yeah, like that. To yeah, to use it as like, if you put our one over the top of that one. Um, and if you did it with keeps... like chipping medium and then you scrubbed it. You could do that. You could do that yeah. and then it would yeah. like leave, uh, do like a sort of Verdigris thing in the recesses. Yeah. Well. Like, so like, there's like, a lot of interesting little combinations, little combinations and things to be had. Yeah. yeah. Kind of forge um, Megazord combinations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to know, yeah, can someone use <laughs> all eight of them on my model <laughs> in some way? Definitely a big model. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On your Wall of Titan, can you yeah. use all eight of the Signature Series cans? Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so that was cool to see those in in the, in the um, in person for the first time. Yeah. yeah. And you two hadn't met Huey or any of the guys from Color Forge before. No, so no. No, so, they're, yeah. they're lovely. They're yeah. really nice. Yeah. Um, Huey has an exemplary moustache. I'm just going to put that out there. Very suave yeah. gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> very yeah. suave gentleman. Very yeah. suave gentleman. Yeah. Um, I, I just look at him and I go, I trust this man <laughs> to make the best, <laughs> the best prime as possible. Yeah. Um, hopefully, we kind of spoke about potentially getting him on the podcast. Yeah, maybe. Hopefully. Yeah, that might be quite good. Down actually. the line. Yeah. Should be fun. Well, we're calling him out now, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know. Not yeah. just for, for colourful. If you don't see him in the next year on the podcast, it, were, it was us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If you're a long-term listener of the podcast, you'll know how important it is to have the right tools to aid you in your painting. And if there's one piece of equipment that I could never live without, it's my Onyx lamp from Native Lighting. It doesn't matter what brush or paints you have if you can't see what you're doing in the first place. The Onyx is the perfect lamp for miniature painting because it's super bright, 2200 lumen LEDs cast soft and diffused light on your models without any harsh shadows. And its daylight balanced color temperature of 6500K gives you the confidence that the colors you are painting are accurate. As someone with a very small hobby desk, by far my favorite feature though is its articulating arm, which clamps to the side of your desk, maximizing your workspace. It's also super adjustable so you can sit comfortably in the perfect painting position without sacrifice. It also folds up into a compact shape, which is great if you like to travel to paint with your friends. To upgrade your setup and order yours now, head to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop or head to the link in this episode's description. And we met a few met a few listeners on that stand as well. Well, we met a few listeners through the day regardless. Which was um, amazing. We we all said, like, we obviously announced that we were going to be there, and we was hopeful that m- there might be a few people that we bump into that would be like, oh, seeing the podcast, and we thought that would be cool. It was ridiculous, actually. <laughs> it was actually very odd. Yeah. yeah. Um, we, n- none of us could believe how many people yeah. no, wanted was, to stop by and say hello. I, yeah, I didn't think anyone... I do you know what I thought it would be was maybe there'd be a few people who we walk past they might recognize us they might watch the podcast but it would be those ones where you go you like nudge your mate and you go oh that's you know from the C Studios podcast thing um not actually like people would, that would want to come up and chat to us and stuff which was really cool um like yeah we got pictures of people and was chatting to a few listeners and something there's one one of the listeners um it was like asking about music stuff, yeah, yeah, and and, and, and things like that. And I, um, I put forward Hate Breed, and he'd never listened to Hate Breed. So if I've influenced someone to listen to Hate Breed for the first time, <laughs> solid choice. Then I've done my job. Um, solid choice. Um, yeah, it was just cool, wasn't it? Like Every, everyone that we spoke to was amazing. Um, it was really, really, really weird. But you, <laughs> it was <also> very, very <laughs> cool <laughs> to speak you, to everyone. You, you missed out the best bit. The best bit. Oh, the best. We almost bit. forgot. Go on, Joe. It's time to admit it. You had to sign on a Blood Angel <laughs> box, didn't you? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Come I on. I thought I would get away with this not being public, but <laughs> then James took a picture of it. Yeah, no, that was cool though as well. Like we, are, we, we, we were asked to sign something for someone. Yeah, so we had one chap come over and uh, it, yeah, a fellow lover of the Blood Angel chapter, let's put it that way. Not, not the only one of the day either. No. I know. No. I, all these people saying they're going to paint Dark Angels in solidarity with me, like... When it, I think it's a, you ruse. Sat, <laughs> it's a ruse. <laughs> it's a ruse. Um, no, so we had a chat come over. Uh, amazing, amazing guy. And um, yeah, just came over and started talking about podcasts, talking about obviously Blood Angels. Because why wouldn't you? Um, and um, and then proceeded to ask us to sign 
a uh, a box of, of Blood Angels, which was uh, which was. It was like the uh, was it the one, it was one of the, the heroes? One of the, yeah, one yeah. of the Warhammer heroes thing. What a what an amazing selection of miniature and um, and. I have uh, I, also. It's not strictly Blood Angels. It's just Blood Angels on the box art. Right? Oh, it's red. It's red. It's Blood Angels on the box art. It's not. It's like, you can paint it any color you want. You can. You can. That's fact. Um, <laughs> the pain in however, I can, however, paint, I can however, paint an Azrael red if I want. That's a fact. However, Where are we going to draw the line? <laughs> what, what do you mean? Well, you said, oh, it's just a model. You can paint it whatever colour you want. So I could do that. Yeah, there's no, it's not like it's Mephiston or something is what I'm getting Oh, at. yeah, because you can possibly time. paint Mephiston green. No, but the the Warhammer be, police would come and kick you an oar in heresy. Be, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a Blood Angel model is what I was getting at. But there is Blood Angel on the, on the box art. So you had I, to sign a Blood Angel. I did sign it and I just... <laughs> Reluctantly, <wanted> to, <laughs> I lad. <laughs> I the, pain, <laughs> the pain in Joe's face when he was doing it was, was a just picture. Wanna, <laughs> just want to put this out there. Um... I have now promised to this listener that um, that's the only Blood Angel thing I'll ever sign. So if anyone does come up to us for some, for us, you know, for, some, for us to sign something at a, at a later date at another event, unfortunately, I'm now locked into a verbal contract. <laughs> um, so we got. I'm, I'm not allowed to sign any more Blood Angel stuff because it will devalue this chat. He's got a genuine uh, one. I mean, one. we've already devalued it by writing on it, but. Um, <laughs> But it will, it will, you know, there's a verbal contract there. So please don't put me in that position again. And I would, if you do want anything signed, play it safe. Bring some Dark Angels models for us all to sign. We can all sign some Dark Angel stuff, can't we? Well, G George is going to get tackled for not using black base rims. You're going to have to sign Blood Angel stuff. And what's next? Me, I, people me, people, people me, caught up at you. You said tackled. People caught up on the joke that you said about <laughs> Joe said, uh, if you see George there, tackle him for his stickers. <laughs> now... We I actually, didn't think that would make it in, being that you were the one editing the podcast. Well, but. it did make it in, and uh, I remember distinctly at one point getting tapped on the shoulder, and uh, they said, "Sorry, I was uh, I was going to tackle you, but I saw you're a bit taller than I thought you'd be." <laughs> <laughs> as we were as we were walking in, George was behind me. He was like, I'm "Not going to lie, I'm a bit worried. I'm, I could get tackled to the ground at any moment." <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yeah, but they didn't know, did they? They were very polite. No, actually, people were very was. nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. They were those guys were at Warboot the day after. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They walked in and they were like, "Promise we're not following you." Yeah, like, we're, not, <laughs> we're not following you around. Because you remember we saw in the car park, we drove past them in the car park as well. Oh really? Yeah. I didn't notice that. Um, I wonder. My thing is, you're going to have to get tackled. You're going to have to sign blood angels and stuff. Someone's got to bring them to walk the walk drill with them or yeah, something. Yeah, someone's like going to be surely. chasing you with a drill. Oh, George, no, with a pin vice, surely. George got um, <laughs> George, signing pin vice, the squeaky <laughs> pin vice, just chasing Jay. Yeah. With, <laughs> <laughs> um, George got heckled. I know. Oh, I did get heckled. Yeah. yeah. yeah While we were having a conversation, I should have mentioned someone. that earlier when we were talking about the base room. Yeah, someone yelled "brown brown base room" at me from across the hall. <laughs> <laughs> Got heckled while I was while I was chatting to to Ian. I think. Uh? I think it was while I was chatting to, was. to Ian. Yeah, I can't remember. Someone yeah. yelled at me. Yeah. yeah. Um, more of that. Do that definitely. <laughs> if you see George in public, just shout brown face. <laughs> I'm waiting for the day that I'm just like queuing at the bank and someone yeah, just someone screams goes, it out of the brown car. Base room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it was fun. It was our first event since doing a podcast. Yeah. So it was definitely ours. Um, was, uh, James James went to you went to Salute didn't you I've been to Salute yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah it was our all of us together it was our first event since doing a podcast so it was I think that's the first time actually the three of us have gotten together outside of work since Warhammer Fest yeah 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 yeah. pretty much that shatters the illusion that we're all like, <laughs> like best mates um, well, we, well, we see each other uh, every day yeah, so. yeah. Um, <laughs> I love the idea that like, we just leave work and I'm, I'm like Mute you both. <laughs> don't don't hear from you until eight AM. Um, I'm gonna pretend to like you from the hours of eight <laughs> yeah. till five and no more. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, it was just cool though. I didn't know how it would go. Um and it was just really nice to interact with people that had listened to the podcast. Because yeah. this is a very like um it's a weird thing, isn't it, the, the podcast? Because we don't actually interact with it with anyone while we're doing it. No. So you can get your views and your comments and stuff, but it doesn't really feel real mm. until you like out and about bump into someone and they're like, oh, I like the podcast. It's really nice. Yeah. And yeah. to have that that interaction with them like properly. Yeah. And they're all nice. Every, yeah. Everyone, yeah, was everyone right. that we that met was, was, the key. was amazing. Yeah. That was yeah. the key. Everyone was nice. Well, no apart one... from the heckler, but yeah. No, no. <laughs> everyone was nice. Everyone, <laughs> everyone was nice. Um, I said about you, it was, a, it was a strange experience having people want to meet me. 
It was a very, very peculiar <laughs> scenario. It's, it's quite, it's quite, sounds quite sad. <laughs> <laughs> in that context, well, James, James has been doing this for mean. a long time. He's been in bands before. He's used to people coming up to him. Yeah, but, I get what you mean. Um, but again, I think because they were just all pretty chill and nice, it's like, it makes it, if, it, they, if, if we had people like, if we're, if we're in like the Beatles and everyone was like screaming, <laughs> then yeah, it would be weird, but. I think um, I think for me, one of the things that I've, whether it's been obviously with the podcast or just in Siege in general, like, you know, one of the things that is always really nice when we do go to shows or when we do meet people and stuff like that, I think it's the value that we that we, we want to give back and that the value that we do give to people in the sort of like tips or hacks or like helping them with their painting or like any of these things. It's just the comments that we, we see the comments on the videos on obviously the episodes and stuff. But to actually have an interaction with somebody and and see from them directly in their eyes how much it actually means to them and actually helps them, I think that for me is like the one of the most rewarding things for oh, of, it's the of, best of, the best feeling of yeah. the podcast. Like, like you said, like it's one thing to read all the comments and the direct messages, and that's always amazing, and I absolutely love hearing from everyone. But to have it have that interaction in person was like a whole new level. The, yeah, like the people pulling up like their models. Yeah, and like oh yeah, I did this while I was listening. Oh, and I did this because you said it on the podcast or whatever. Like. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that, cool. was, that was not cool. that, that any of that was mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh yeah, I did your basin hobby hat. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, that was cool. The actual event, though, overall, like it's a bit hard to talk too much about because there's like, so much there. We didn't like, really experience it in the way you might experience it if you were just going. Obviously, we were going there with the purpose of doing the colourful stuff, so that took a lot of our time aside, and we were only there for the day. However, we did get to go around um, the different halls and stuff a couple of times. Yeah. And it gave me enough of a taste that I would definitely want to go back next year like, uh, and have the whole day just to walk yeah, around. Genuinely, I would think like, um, I mean, whether we're there next year in some other capacity or not, or like we were this year or whatever, I would love to have some more time there to actually just experience it. Because mm -hmm. there was... There was a load of things that, that we walked past where I was like, I'd love to spend more time. Oh, I want to, you know what I mean? Yeah. I want to go and have a look at that, but we can't because we're doing this thing. I was I shocked at how much play testing was like available. It's like most of it. Yeah, I didn't yeah. realize that. I mean, obviously that's naively, kind of what but I that's would, kind of the point of going, that, right? That's kind of the thing of like, you think, oh, how can it be three days? And it's like, well, that's why. Like there's so much stuff to play test. You could be sat down there for an hour. Do you know what I mean? Well, it's yep. great. I mean, the gaming hall, the main gaming, because like, obviously you've got the two main vendor halls and little things there. And you've got a huge hall that's literally just got it's rows just tables, and rows yeah. and rows of tables for gaming. Um, that's open till like midnight. Like it's it's like, so even if the show, the show finishes at six, like you can just get some food and drink with your friends and go into the gaming hall. And I say hall in the very loosest of terms because it is massive. Like and hanger, yeah, <laughs> hanger, yeah, it pretty much is. Uh, and and you can just sit there and play games to your mates all evening. So um, so yeah, I mean, like it's a, it's a, it's a great experience. Uh, the other thing, like we, we haven't even spoken about the outside. So like even outside, there's like a Viking like periodic reenactment. Oh yeah, there's got, some, like, there was some sword, larping. There's so some like, larping going. Yeah, yeah, I do yeah. wonder um, whether that was like do do they just do that or is that like is there like a do you have to get permission from the I, expo I, I, or I was it's outside. The, I was under the assumption that it was part of the event and it was organised and planned. It must be just due to some of the signage. Yeah, I mean, I I love I love looking at all that. Yeah, like, no. I, like there was people. With, it was there was some uh, some brawls going on. There was people in armour. Yeah, there was sword people. Um, people going. Yeah, but there was a little um, battlefield like little sword fighting practice arena, wasn't there? Yeah, and, um, lightsaber duel so, as well. That was inside. That yeah, was inside. that was inside. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the larping thing is like so sick to see like the effort that goes into that yeah is insane i definitely appreciate that more as a as a passerby than uh i think the reality of getting up at 4am and putting up my canvas tent would uh would probably yeah. crush it for getting me, the but... turkey legs on the bonfire <laughs> exactly and, uh, yeah getting the mead ready <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of mead at the event there was a lot of mead yeah. yeah there was a lot of mead meads on the meads coming meads back. on the up meads on the up um, that's my big takeaway from the weekend. Anyway. <laughs> um, Mead is on the 2025 up. prediction. Mead will be a uh... Mead is on the up. Um, water is out. Declining yeah. is out. Water's Old news. Out. Yeah, water's yeah. rubbish. Uh, you thought you thought that uh, microbrew ales were all the rage. Yeah, Mead. Yeah, it's Mead. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, <laughs> circling back. Um, it is. We should do a Mead podcast. It was. Uh, <laughs> 
back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about mead. I've like the last. We don't know anything about painting, and here we are. <laughs> the last, the last, uh, the last sixty seconds of me exhausting how far I can talk about mead. That is as much as I can go on mead. I'm afraid. Right, you've said that word about eighty well, times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> eighty times in the last five minutes. Um, yeah. My favourite thing was like just looking around the vendor hall, at all the different stands, but. It was a rare opportunity to see a lot of the, I guess, newer um, miniature painting products like in person that you can buy from a shop. Mm -hmm. So um, like AK had a whole booth there, like the whole AK interactive, interactive paint ranges and all their basing products and stuff. Uh, we've done a little bit of shopping, didn't we? George finally yeah. convinced me after much, much deliberation to pick up the, um, the glaze, glaze medium. medium. This yeah. glaze medium conversation, right? This, this end up, other people end up getting involved in that. Honestly, right? like... <laughs> Like this glaze medium thing, George kept mentioning it all day as if it was like a historic conversation that we'd all had. And I had well, no I'd had it with James, to be fair. I yeah. had no idea what he was on about. And it, it, it would, it'd just be like, you yeah, know, we've got to get the glaze medium. And I'd be like, why does he keep banging on about glaze medium? <laughs> <laughs> we were, got to the stand. There was a couple of people that you knew there. I yeah, think. so uh, Nathan, uh, a good good friend of mine, Nathan, who I've known from painting competitions, uh, re really phenomenal painter. I'll put his uh, put his tag up so you can you can see it. Um, but uh, he's, he's yeah, phenomenal painter and, and Moggy as well. Um, uh, I've known him for a long time as well. A, a lot of guys that do competition painting and then are in the heresy scene as well. Yeah, so, so they they were just there. So we got chatting to them. They were trying to peer pressure me and George to go into uh, Spiel. Golden Demon, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and they ended up they ended up getting in on the. I, I was like, yeah, I'll have a go on the on the Blazer Media, and then I'll have a bit of that. It's so like when you go to a bar and you get peer pressure yeah, into I'll a drink. Pick, yeah. I picked one of them up, and then they were both getting involved in the conversation as well. That they were like. Yeah, go on then. Let's chuck us another one of them glaze mediums. Let's have one of them. <laughs> we end up, they end up selling about like you're you're a top glaze medium salesman. James bought get, James bought two. You Mage bought one. So yeah, that's, bought that's, one. that's four. That's five. That's five glaze mediums. And then I bought I was like, oh, I'll have a go on their satin varnish, actually. And then you were like, Yeah, I'll give that a go. So I was all going back around. <laughs> oh, circle. worse than that, when I was at the queue, the paint rack was actually like behind where uh, where the checkout was. And while I was stood there, she was like uh, scaling all my stuff that I was buying. And I was like, Oh, actually, I just leaned across. <laughs> I ended up getting some primer because we've been whinging, I've been whinging about the Vallejo one. So I thought I'd give the AK one a go. Oh, the airbrush so primer. primer. Yeah, I've not tried it yet, but I'll report back report next week. Back. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, that's I would say number one, number one top thing that people think we get wrong is airbrush primer. I'm not sure what's going on there. I think I don't think it's that anyone's right or wrong. Like I'm just speaking to my experience with it. If everyone else is having good luck with it, then. Hats off. Like, great, great. I wish it worked. It doesn't for me. Um, I've tried applying it in a million different ways and it, it doesn't stay. I'm so just, maybe I've got an old bottle that's gone off or I need to try something else. Yeah, I'm just, the comments don't lie. <laughs> and uh, that well, is, a few people have said that it doesn't work for them either. Yeah. I don't think it's as, as simple there, as there's that. Been, there's, been com there's been comments on both sides of the fence, but I, I, as, I've had the exact same experience as you. So yeah. so yeah. But yeah, we'll see how this AK one goes then. Yeah, yeah, so that was cool. That was about the only shopping I did. I could have spent a lot of money. Yeah, there's yeah. so many. If we had more so time to walk around, yeah. um, I could have spent. Do you know, do you know what it was, it was for me? It wasn't actually walking around and seeing the stuff like on the actual stands. It was seeing people walking around carrying things that they'd bought. And I'd see something like, oh, that was cool. Like, as they go past. Well, you, yeah. you pointed it as we turned up. So we got there about like, what, half <laughs> oh, yeah. time. There, there were people leaving with like armfuls of board games. I was like, I was <laughs> that is people that have gone there from the Friday. They've scoped out what they want. And then Saturday morning, they've gone back with a vengeance. Yeah. We and got, they were in and out within 20 minutes or something. We like got that. there not long after they'd opened. It was about half nine. Well, and as we, was, as we was we were walking all... from the car park to the venue, there were people coming the opposite way with armfuls of, of board games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was so good. I, like, like, I actually choose to believe that they got there at nine. Yeah. And they were just, they was in and out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. So, so when I used to work in retail. No, but they hadn't been there the day before. Hadn't been there the day before. They, 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 yeah. they, they are the sort of customers, like when I used to work in retail and you had like a big sale on, as soon as, soon as the electric shutters get up, you've got the, the national shutter clearing champion that just dives under the shutter to run <laughs> to run towards the sale item that they need that's definitely what had happened the old the old black friday scenes yeah i remember that happening but there'd be no one else in the queue retail and they'd still be rushing because yeah. <laughs> so you'd be like you know there's like no one else here. yeah yeah <laughs> retail olympics is what i used to used yeah. to yeah but yeah that was one thing we didn't get to experience actually was the um kind of bring them by section because yeah. i was like it was like cordoned off in a little bit and then like 
It was cash only, which we didn't really have any cash, and you weren't allowed to bring a bag in. It was a very bizarre. So there was a lot of people. Honest. Yeah, I imagine it's some kind of anti theft. Yeah, thing, yeah, but it's, it, yeah. I don't know. There has to be a different way to do that. Surely, I don't know. It just seemed odd because the amount of people that I spoke to that would have gone in there but didn't. Yeah seems like something you might want to change and it was but, also like walled off we couldn't actually even like peer see what was, to in, see there, what was yeah. in there yeah. yeah i don't know i i imagine to be fair if it wasn't the way that it was um it would be just ramp it'd be like yeah, yeah. it'd be so it'd be carnage hard. honestly it'd be like, so hard to walk through so maybe that's part i mean of you experience well. warboot imagine it imagine exactly it, yeah, yeah you yeah. know to be fair, that was the thing. When we first got there, Saturday must have obviously been the busier day because we got there right around opening time and it was heaving. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of people. So, I, so I, Friday, everyone I spoke to that was having stands there, like obviously people we caught up with and stuff like Friday was a little bit quieter. Um, than but Saturday. still busier than last still year. Still busier than last year. But then, yeah, because I went to the one the year before and it was generally quite, it was way quieter than than this year's one. And that's purely down to obviously pandemic and stuff. But um, Well, it's an indication that all of that pandemic stuff wasn't just a flash in the pan because no. it's still getting bigger every year. Yeah, yeah. Like so, with some industries, you saw like, oh, there was a big boom during COVID and then afterwards it fell off. Whereas this is like, just kept going every year. Yeah, yeah. 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 But um, great weekend. It's very good. Yeah, yeah. I do kind of wish... Like say, yeah, maybe we, we did have an extra day or something, but we only really scheduled. I think I'll definitely around. do two days next year. Yeah, we yeah. only really planned I think that'd around. be my advice if you was going, would probably be, it. it's hard to tell with events like that because you always think like, oh, do I want to go for two days? Is that too much? Is it, it here's enough? the thing. If your whole plan is that you're just going to walk around the traders and buy some stuff, you only need one day. A day, day. yeah. You only need one day. You will need the day probably. Like it's a, there's a lot. There's two massive halls of traders. Um, but... If you actually want to get the full experience and test some games out, maybe play some games with your mates in the other hall, like James was saying. Um, play test some games that you're interested in or hadn't heard of, see if they're for yeah, you. Yeah, there was a couple that were there that I that I knew about, like I was pointing out to you about the, um, the I forget what the game's actually called now, but it's from the No Rolls Bard channel that I mentioned before. And they had their stand, the trivia thing. You Know It, I think is the name of that game. That's the one. Yeah. That's the one. So... Yeah, it would have been cool like to have a spare hour to yeah. test that out. Do you know what I mean? But um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend doing that if you were going to go get a couple of days um, and test some games out. That's what we're there for. Highlight for you of the day, what was it? Um, it was, like I said, it was nice seeing, well, I mean, I wish I'd experienced it more, but it, it's opened my eyes and I've already made a few mental notes of like some games that I didn't know existed. Um and also just being able to, like, I don't have any big hobby shops near me. So just being able to actually see yeah. a lot of the products that I shop for online, like in person, seeing like the full range rather than like selected range that they have online. Um, that was really cool. And of course, meeting the fans. That was yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I think meeting, like meeting people, talking to people yeah. was, was the best, I agree. Um, the best part. Both yeah. like, like George was saying, the fans and um, obviously like I was saying, we, we got to see Ian Livingston. And yeah. That was pretty crazy. Yeah. Just a, crazy thing so um yeah that's probably it for me like we didn't really like i say we didn't really go out and test games and stuff so. no 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 yeah, yeah. it was All great for you meeting meeting everyone that was amazing signing something you getting heckled and you getting a photo with a raven guard i think they're my, oh they're the my, raven guard we did so yeah i'll put that on the screen there you go <laughs> they're, my, they're, my fav, they're my favorite things i couldn't I, I couldn't walk past this and not make joe take a photo yeah next to it. look no hate, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got a photo with it, so you, it's, it's, you, you, if you didn't if like anything, it, then I'm promoting Raven Guard. Yeah, so that's the way they should take what you can get, Raven Guard fans, because you're not getting anything else. <laughs> I put it this way: I ain't seen anyone else post a picture with it. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was great. Yeah, no, in all, but all jokes aside, like yeah, meeting people, chatting to them, and, and just oh, the, the positive stuff. Was, sorry, there was one big thing to improve for next year. What's that? Obviously, there was no vegan subway options for james yeah i would say that was a little so bit spent a long time in the queue at subway got all the way up there and they were like what is vegan <laughs> it was a long hard hungry walk back but yeah um, but i think error one. one was as vegan not checking before you Just got go up the to the queue. front have a little look yeah that, but that'd do that'd, that'd be enough yeah yeah other than that no it's good as artists, we know how time-consuming painting miniatures is, especially if you want to achieve a high standard for tabletop or display. Life is busy, and we don't all have eight hours a day to paint. Plus, if you're still early in your painting journey, it may feel that you're a long way off ever owning your own beautiful army for your games. For 10 years, Siege Studios has been delivering bespoke miniature painting commissions to collectors and gamers all over the world. 
We have a world-class team of artists from Golden Demon winners to ex-studio painters, collating hundreds of years of collective experience. Here at Siege, we offer a series of painting levels and services to meet your needs and budget, whether you want a favorite character for your display or a stunning gaming army. We pride ourselves on offering well above the industry standard of quality and our customer experience. To see our gallery, learn more about our services and get a quote now, head over to siegestudios.co.uk or head to the link in this episode's description. Okay, we can't forget, of course, it has been, I can't say it is, but it has been Adeptus Mechanicus, which is one of our monthly painting challenges that we do here on the podcast. Um, as a quick announcement before we get into the submissions for the Admech stuff, we're going to be changing the way that we do these just a little bit because people often ask and they can't find the episodes and there's never really been never really been all of the information in one place. So what we've done is we've made a new channel on the Siege Studios Discord server. If you're not a member, please join in the description. It's free. And I've put a channel in there so that you can see all of the months that are coming up and work out what ones you want to enter into. And if you want to enter your submissions, that is the easiest place to do it. Um, next month is uh, going to be June. So it's June Steeler Colts. So you have all of the month of June to paint anything Gene Steeler Colts and we'll showcase it on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, Admech up first. Um, they're going to be on screen for people. Do we have any uh, any favorite picks? Look, I think we all want to go for the... Uh, <laughs> I'm glad we're all thinking the same thing. that trumped all others. <laughs> and it feels bad to make it the favorite, but you know that me and James in particular appreciate a rule bend yeah rule bend is is key we love a rule bend and there is it's a kind rule of bend. I, I should have prefaced it's kind of a staple of of the monthly challenges is that how you know, we you, say gene steal a colts but you know how can you bend it so it still has to make sense you have to be able to justify it yeah and i think this is justifiable um can you tell what one i'm talking about uh, it's of course the ballista's dreadnought with the uh yeah. with the admech tiny little admech cog on the back <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, so I always wanted an excuse to paint some ultramarines. Yeah, happy that. Adeptus Mechanicus to those who celebrate. Here is a Dreadnought Look, if we each, a tiny logo on the back. If we each had a plaque with a 10 on it, it'd be raised pretty high right now. Yeah. So, um, However, outside of that and, yeah. and jokey answers and everything, there's a couple of cool, uh, cool submissions as well. Uh, actual Admech stuff. Um, but slight problem here. And I think we need to be held accountable. None of us have got anything, even the jokey even like a joke submission. None of us have got anything away. It's been a, it's been a busy month, Joe. Busy yeah. month. Well, yeah. well, well, well. Right. well so what I'm I, feel like, I feel like I'm I've earned the, some brownie myself, points. I'm I've earned some brownie points. I've, I've saved up some excuses to get out of one of these. And I'm, I'm cashing it in. No. <laughs> well, I, I'm i putting myself in this as well because I haven't got anything either. But I think June Steeler, June Steeler Colts. Well... We need to make sure we've got something good, um, each of us. It's been timed well because there is a new kill team uh, that's come out this month, mm. which George, is... George will paint a foot. <laughs> yeah, I could, I could paint a foot. Yeah, it's a, what, they, what are they called? The Blood, Blood Brothers, is that what they're called? Yeah. Brood, Brood, Brood Brothers. Brothers. Brood Brothers. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the like, Admech Gene Steeler yeah. crossover thing. Yeah. Because um, they look sick. Yeah. And I really want to paint one. So there we go. I think we all need... Uh, to be held accountable and we all need to promise that there will be something um, well wow. for uh, but this time next month well it's time to cash in my favourite thing that I've wanted to paint for a long time because I've wanted to paint what I think is probably the best character model from the Gene Steeler cult range which is the Kellermorph I know he's going to say Kellermorph and, yeah, and do you know the and, amount of times I've heard him say that word over the last four years a I've, few I've never seen the finished model is always the amount of times he said he's painting that model. It's crazy. So it's more. You think you've had it with the Maudians? <laughs> you think you've had it with six months of Maudians? I've had four years of Kellermore. <laughs> <laughs> Kellermore is happening. I'm going to put it right there. It's happening. Do you know what's funny? The fact that he's not going to have it done. No, the thing that I'm thinking of doing is literally just. The box that he got the Kellermorph out of, he gave me the rest of the models. That, that <laughs> I've got like, it, what was it, like five jeans? Normal well, jeans? Like, or oh, yeah, or it's the or acolytes. Uh, acolytes. Yeah, it's like yeah. five acolytes or something yeah. from like, it was like a Kill Team box from ages ago. So I've still got that spruce out of home somewhere. So I was thinking nice. I'll knock one of them up. I talk about Marines like a lot because it's most of what I paint, which is a large part due to being a commission painter. But GSC is like such a 
faultless range. No, it's amazing. I absolutely love Gene Simmons. I'd love to do an army of them. It's never got me excited, if I'm honest. The thing that puts me off is that it's a horde army, and that's why I won't do one. For a it's just never project. really like. But the, there are the characters are fantastic. Even some of the smaller squads are fantastic. Love the vibe. And the heavy metal paint jobs on them are exceptional. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just don't know what it is. I don't know. The, the vibe of the, the faction has never ticked all the boxes for me. But there are some individual character models that I've always really liked. The Kellermorph is one of them. Yeah. That is a cool model. Um, I've also got another one. I've got another um, Abominant model. One of the, he's got the little, he's got a little friend with him. Uh, I can't remember which one is. I'll put a picture up there. But, um, but that is another one that I, that I, Fancy having a go at, and I've got yeah. I've got one at home, so I'll give that a bosh, maybe. So there we go. We're all locked in. Going to hold each other accountable, aren't we? I'll do it. I I have this. A... That's going to be the clip, by the way. So it's going to be it's going to be James saying that, and then it's going to cut to in four weeks time. James going. So I didn't get the Kellermorph done. Yeah. <laughs> um. I mean, I, I don't know why I'm saying this, but I am saying it, and you can leave it in. But we're going to all get it done, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Yeah. Correct. Correct. There but but a, a big thank you to everybody who did do models for Adeptus May Canicus. Yeah, there some were, great ones. There, uh, there was some. So the next month, again, as I said, it's uh, June Steeler Colts. It's on screen. Uh, use the hashtag, please, if you're submitting on Instagram. And even if you're submitting on Discord, please do use the hashtag as well. Uh, it's very hard to find all of the entries for these. Um, as I always say, if you've not been included, that is not intentional. It's just that hard to find all of them. I think very if, spread out. if you want to guarantee being included and we have a look at them and everything... Um, Discord. Do it via Discord. Discord. Yeah. yeah. Question of the week time. Thank you everyone for submitting your questions for question of the week. If you have a question that you'd like us to answer on a future episode of the podcast, please do leave it in the comments below on YouTube. This week, our question is from uh, Finex O'Malley, who says, awesome podcast, lads. Always a great listen. Question for everyone, really. Is there a trick to color theory or is it just experience? Personally, I'm always impressed seeing people using washes, glazing or layering with different colors to some amazing results as it's some sort of witchcraft, which is a good way of starting to find complementary colors and also understanding how they interact with each other when mixed. Well, that is uh, a really good question. And it's, it's not some like some magic juju. Like you, there is, there is a uh, methodology to, to the visual madness that potentially a color wheel does initially present itself. I don't, I don't think it's as like black and white as like you either get color theory or you don't. Because if you see like some of the more fringe examples, like the like Craft World Studios and all that, like really, really colorful pieces with very, very dramatic shallow, shadows in like contrasting colors that I guess in your head you wouldn't really think of. You've got that, but then like people, you can use it very, very tastefully. Yep. And I think it's kind of like, you know, this might be a bit of a weird example, but you know how they say like good CGI in a movie is when you don't know it's CGI, like yeah, you don't even yeah. notice it. Yeah. So subtle, like Wolf of Wall Street, like you don't even realize. Yeah. I think good use of color theory is more like that for me than it is like some big figure with like yeah. some crazy, dramatic, really saturated shadows. Yeah. I see it as a language. So I see it as a way of... Uh, putting color on a miniature in a way that reads well to the eye, which is based on the color, colors interact with each other. You could literally spend uh, ages learning color theory, all manners of the different uh, different color relationships, et cetera. As a, as a very initial soiree into it, if you want to call it anything, I would literally just say understanding uh, complementary colors, as in when they're diagonal on the color wheel. Uh, so complementary uh, and also harmonious, which is the color next to the color. So as an example, red and green, obviously uh, contrasting or complementary co uh, colors. Um, you can use green to add interest with red, or you can use red to add interest with green. Um, the same way that you can theoretically shade areas of red which, with green, which sounds crazy, but it works because of that color relationship. Um, it, it just tends to make a more striking scheme when you're using those kind of relationships. And I said, it's it's like a language that you can use to to, to manifest color on a miniature, how you want to, and give a very, a very sort of pleasing look to the miniature. Um, harmonious, as I mentioned, is like a, a next to, think of it like a brother or sister. So like red and green staying on that, on that color relationship. Um, what you can pin shade or shade glaze with like mauves burgundies uh, purples on red and it works really well for the shadows on that red because um it is a harmonious color of, of of red if that makes sense um 
other things like, for example, like, you know, choosing the harmony color of the complement. So for example, like on one of my old squads, I'd done like turquoise, almost like I used to scale 75 Caribbean blue. It's like one of the colors in the blending of the sword. It's a turquoise. That's a harmonious color of the complement of red. So it works really well. So like, it's, it's just a way of, um, it's just a way of interpreting and using the color to add interest to miniatures. And, and, and then also, like I said, it's like a language. So once you have a, a modicum of understanding of color theory, and I'm not talking about learning every single different type of color relationship because there are a whole load and they do take a long time for you to understand and how to actually use the colors, et cetera. Not something to be, that you should be scared of. You should just take incremental steps and learn it. Um, but once you understand that, it actually makes looking at other people's miniatures that do use color theory. It's, it's reading that language on the models. So for example, it's like, um, uh, if your model's painted like a blue um, and then it has yellow accents and then red lenses, like yeah, it's a primary color triad, you know, I've got of, 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 of blue, red, and yellow. Um, if you, if you see why someone's used purple on, on, uh, on a turquoise model and then has orange accents, that's because those colors are a triadic scheme obviously between them as well. So it, it actually allows you to look at people's miniatures understand the choices that as a painter that person has made and why they've made those choices why they've done the buttons on that orange model that's got a purple glow that color does that make sense so like it's it's just a really helpful way of interpreting miniatures and and, and i think ultimately when you do have even a very minute understanding of it you know a good thing about it is that it gives you the confidence of color choice so if you're sitting there we've all been there where we sit there and go i don't know what color to use on this it gives you a really good almost prompt to go, well, I know this is the complement of the color that I'm using. So I could use that, for example, or, you know, this color is the harmony of that color. So I could, I could use that in that place, if that makes sense. So it just gives you a grounding that you have confidence in. And that's, that's kind of what I, what I see it as. Think of it like a language, enter it slowly and just learn the basics and then build up from there. I think um, some easy ways for that as well would just be what look up some YouTube videos, because it's not a thing that's specific to miniature painting. It's mm -hmm. obviously in a whole modicum of art. Um, but one thing I would just be cautious of is that a lot of art videos that talk about this, I'm talking like fine art, oil paints, that sort of thing, miniature based uh, paints, so like Citadel and Vallejo and whatnot, they are almost always not single pigment. So you can't necessarily mix them in the same way that you can uh, like single pigment oil paints, which will be often what is demoed uh, when talking about color theory. So just bear that in mind. It might go way more desaturated or tend towards brown. Okay, if you've made it to the end of the podcast, this is your reward. This is our segment that we call Hobby Hacks. This is where we share a closing little quick tip with you. And I'm going to go a little bit rogue this week because we've actually had a suggestion from a listener. And I thought this was actually <laughs> maybe not super useful, but you can see like the, I see the train of thought. My favorite hobby hacks are the ones that aren't useful. So <laughs> let's go. Uh, which one's, it's not this not useful it's just gonna be quite specific to a specific sort of person okay uh, so this was from deadwood atelier who uh forwarded me a uh, a reel from uh this is panzer builder on instagram and uh basically if you've got a big tank or a vehicle or a larger model a knight perhaps and you want to do some big scratches and some weathering on it to scale because we all like it when it's a nice fine scratch don't we mm-hmm you might be thinking, I'll use a paintbrush, like a pleb. Yeah. What you actually want to do, source yourself a cat whisker oh my God. and uh, dip it in some paint. I'm going to put this on screen for people. <laughs> uh, you dip it in some paint on your wet palette and you can just lay down like a nice flick of, uh, of paint and leaves like a really nice straight straight scratch. Works pretty well. Joe's quite surprised. <laughs> uh, what, well, have you tried it? Uh, I've not tried it myself, but I've got cats, so I could give that a go. I'm waiting for one, waiting for a whisker to drop off. First, find first one things on first, seat. I would like to see you try and get a whisker off a cat. No, no, they shed them. They shed whiskers. I don't think the intention is you go up to your cat and yank one off. I think it's... You, they'll, they'll... I, I know they shed hair. I didn't realise... They, shed, did, they I did, shed the whiskers. I didn't yeah. realise they yeah. shed whiskers. They shed the whiskers. So that's, yeah. that's, I've learned something just from this yeah. hobby hack. They so. also shed claws, if you're uh, interested. This is cat what talk could, now. What could you use them for? What are we going to use the claws for? I don't know, some sort of weather. June Steeler. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah, Conversion. You yeah. You've got a Tyranid model. You drop it on the floor. Oh no, I broke the claw off. Hat don't claw. worry. You know, claw. fluffy yeah. coming in clutch with the, with yeah. the cat claw. Um, Quick repair drop, bit of super glue. Drop cat, that. Cat actually called Fluffy. No, my cat's called Molly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I never thought I would uh, ever hear of a hack that involves pets. Um, James can't do it. Yeah, I can't Vegan. do it. Uh, 
vegan that's why yeah. <laughs> and i've got two dogs yeah okay on that note thank you everyone for listening to this week's episode of paint perspective you might have noticed that we have some new ads in this episode so if you could please please support us by picking up some of your seed studios merch uh use code pod 10 it's in the description of this video there's a link to our website really really helps out and also don't forget to check out the patreon as well and we look forward to chatting to you on discord thank you everyone we will catch you next week <laughs>